It says here in verse number 22, Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Tayo bilang mga mana ng palataya. It says here in the word of God, nung tayo ay niligtas ng Diyos, ang niligtas niya ho ay hindi yung body. Okay? When we accepted Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, nung binuksan natin yung ating puso at tanggapin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo by faith, okay? pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. Not because of works. There was this guy that uh, we were sharing the word of God to yesterday. And uh, he believed that if he sinned, yung kaligtasan niya ay mawawala. Okay? That's why whenever we talk to someone and we are sharing the word of God, di ba, minsan, we, uh, yung, yung kind of approach, I do not know what kind of approach you do whenever you share or be a witness of the word of God. Pero kadalasan, ang approach ko ay ganito. The time will come, wag naman sana ngayon. That's what I say. Wag sana ngayon, but what if the time comes at ikaw ay mamatay? Alam mo ba kung saan tutungo ang iyong kaluluwa? That guy said yes. Hindi na ako nag hindi ako nagsestop doon kahit na yung taong yun sabihin yes I still probe questions okay Sisiguraduhin ko kasi yung taong yan uh, who knows baka sinasabi niya lang so I just probed ang sabi ko edi sigurado ka kung saan ka pupunta oh sabi niya saan ka pupunta pag ikaw mamatay pupunta ako ng langit okay continue probing bakit mo naman nasabi na pupunta ka ng langit Sabi niya, dahil ako ay nanampalataya sa Panginoong Heso Kristo. Yun ang sabi. That's a very good answer, tama? But still, we continue probing. Hindi nagsistop doon. Bakit, Brother George? Because there are those people na kahit na sinabi nila na sila ay sumampalataya sa Panginoong Heso Kristo bilang kanilang tagapagligtas at sigurado sila, pag sila ay bawian ng buhay, tutungo sa langit, the next question there is this, papano kung ikaw ay gumawa ng kasalanan? Hello? Because there are people nowadays who believe that their salvation is being lost. Eh, papaano sabi ko sa kanya? <clears throat> sabi mo, ikaw ligtas. Ako din. Ligtas ako. I am sure na pupunta ako ng langit. Pero papaano, sabi ko, papaano kung itong building na to, bago bumagsak sa ating dalawa, bago tayo bawian ng buhay, ah, pero tayo nakagawa tayo ng kasalanan. Tapos itong building na to, bumagsak sa atin, namatay tayong dalawa. Saan ka pupunta? Ay, wala na tayong magagawa dyan. Diretso tayo ng impyerno, sabi niya. Kasi gumawa tayo ng kasalanan eh. Hey, know this! Hindi ka naligtas dahil sa iyong gawa. Hindi rin mawawala ang iyong kaligtasan dahil sa iyong gawa. Kahit na ikaw ay gumawa ng kasalanan, it is according to the word of God. Dahil dito sinabi sa salita ng Diyos, tayo bilang mga mananampalataya in order for our bodies to be sprinkled every day. Ang sabi dito, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Dahil ikaw ay sumampalataya sa Panginoong Heso Kristo, you are saved not because of your works but because of faith. Dahil kung sa ating sariling gawa, hindi ba't sabi sa book of Isaiah? <clears throat> In the book of Isaiah, yung ating good works sa harapan ng Diyos is filthy rags. Kaya nga tayo, magpasalamat tayo. It is not our righteousness that God the Father sees. But rather, since we are washed with the blood of Jesus Christ, it is the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed in us. Kaya yun ang nakikita ng Diyos Ama. Hindi yung righteousness.
righteousness natin. That's why if you have truly had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are saved. But this is what the Bible says. Let's continue verse number 22. It says here, Having our hearts sprinkled from evil conscience and our bodies washed, Anong sabi dyan? With pure water. Hindi not our soul. Ang naghuhugas sa ating soul from our sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Ang naghuhugas naman sa ating body from para makaiwas sa kasalanan. Because note this, in the book of Romans chapter 7, here, Apostle Paul is explaining from verse 15 down to verse number 25, he is explaining here, yung gusto kong gawin. Brother Cedric, yung gusto kong gawin na maganda, sabi ni Apostle Paul, hindi ko magawa. Gusto kong tumulong sa aking kapwa. Pero hindi ko magawa, sabi ni Apostle Paul. This is, it's good. Helping others is good. Being a blessing to others is good. Maging tulong sa ating mga kapitbahay is good. But Apostle Paul is saying here, For that which I do, I mean, in verse number 19, For the good that I would, I do not. Pero yung gusto kong iwasan, tatay, sabi ni Apostle Paul, gusto kong umiwas sa pagsisinungaling, hindi ko maiwasan. Gusto kong umiwas sa pagmumura, hindi ko maiwasan. Gusto kong umiwas na makipagsuntukan, hindi ko maiwasan. No Apostle Paul is saying here, bakit ganun? Because this body of ours, itong katawan ho nating ito, hindi pa ho ito saved. Okay? This body of ours is not yet saved. It is the soul that Jesus Christ saved when we accepted Him as our personal Lord and Savior. Okay? Pero tayo, nananahan pa rin ho tayo sa laman. Now, since tayo ay nananahan sa laman, now, sabi ni Apostle Paul dito sa continuing verse ng ating binabasa in Romans, before we go, uh, uh, this is not, uh, I just, it just crossed my mind, I'd like to explain this, dahil uh, baka yung iba sa inyo, you may have accepted Christ at nag nagwa-wonder kayo, papaano kaya kung ako ay gumawa ng kasalanan, mawawala ba yung kaligtasan ko? Well, here, I am explaining it to you this morning. If you are doubting your salvation, I'll be explaining it to you this morning. So you listen closely, okay? You listen closely. It is your soul that Jesus Christ saves. It is your soul that Jesus Christ washed with His blood. But it is the body of ours that needs to be sprinkled with pure water. Ano yung pure water na yun, Brother George? It is the Word of God. The Word of God will cleanse our lives. That is if, kung ina-apply natin, kung ano ang sinasabi ng salita ng Panginoon. Now, going back here in Romans chapter 7, it says here in verse number 20, Now if I do that I would not, sabi ni Apostle Paul, it is oh, no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Now, hindi na ako yung nagkakasala, sabi ni Apostle Paul. It is no longer the soul that doth the sin. But sin that dwelleth in me, where does sin dwell? It says in verse number 18, going back to uh, a few verses up, it says in verse number 18, For I know that in me, that is my what? Flesh. Dwelleth no what? Good thing. Salaman kung ito. There's nothing good dwelling in this one. Kaya nga magpasalamat tayo. Nung tinanggap natin ang Panginoong Heso Kristo, yung righteousness niya ang tumakip sa atin. At hindi na tayo hubad sa harapan ng Diyos Ama. Amen? It is the blood of Jesus Christ that did that. It is the blood of Jesus Christ that clothed us. It is His blood that imputed His righteousness upon us. Kaya magpasalamat tayo. Hindi na yung kasalanan natin yung nakikita ng Diyos Ama. Ang nakikita niya ay ang Panginoong Heso Kristo na nagpatawad na sa atin. And it says here, in verse number 23, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, to bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So nakita ni Apostle Paul, 
Okay? <clears throat> Apostle Paul said that we are going through a spiritual war. He said here, dito sa verse 23, there is a member warring against the law of my mind. Ano yun? Itong body. Nasubukan na ho ba ninyo maglaro ng tag of war? Sino na nasubukan maglaro nun? Raise your hand. Kunti naman. So yung so, sa mga hindi pa ho nakakapaglaro ng tag of war, uh, ano po yun? I'm going to explain it to you. Uh, it consists of two groups, okay? Tapos, sila ay naghihilaan ng rope. Okay? Ganon yung tag of war. Kung sino yung mahila papunta, kasi dun sa gitna ng rope, merong either naglalagay, ninanat, nilalagyan nila ng nut yung rope, o yung rope dun sa gitna, nilalagyan nila ng tali. Para pag yung tali, lumampas dun sa lane ng humihila, talo na yung part na ito. Okay? Now, let me give you a scenario. It's like this. Si Micah, si Josh, si Kevin, si Caleb, sila'y nandito sa group na ito. Okay? Group A, let's say group A, kasi tago war nga eh. Sila yung group A. Ang kalaban nila dun sa kabilang group, si <laughs> Alam na, alam na kung sino tatawagin. Siya, din, siya lang yung nag-iisa dun eh. So, sasabihin natin yung nandito sa isang group, group B. Si Tatay Rick. Si Tatay Fred. Sino pa? Pwede na ba silang dalawa? Kahit silang dalawa lang? Oh, hindi, dapat apat-apat yan. Apat dito, apat din dito. Okay, si Tatay Rick, si Tatay Fred. Sino pa? Si Brother Sam. Nandito siya. At si Brother Kevin. Ayan, silang apat. Magtatago war sila. Maghihilahan sila ngayon. Sa palagay nyo, tatagal ng isang minuto yung laban. Sino kaya mananalo? Sila Caleb, di ba? <laughs> Kasi sila ang gagawin nila, itatali nila sa poste. Mautak si Caleb, kaya itatali niya sa poste yung kabila. <laughs> hila kayo na nila. O eh, talo kayo, mapapagod kayo. Sila nakaganon lang. But nonetheless, alam natin kung sino mananalo. Tama? Kung sino yung mananalo, dahil bakit, bakit mananalo yung group B? Sila Brother Fred, sila Brother Rick, sila Brother Sam, sila Brother Kevin. Bakit kaya sila mananalo? Malalaki. <laughs> Palalaki. Hindi ba pwedeng malalakas sila? <laughs> Hindi ba pwedeng, bakit malalaki ka agad? Pwede bang malalakas naman? Malalakas sila. Okay? Malalakas sila, tama? Kaya matatalo itong group na to. Not saying na dahil sila ay weak, but uh, physically, uh, kung, pag i-compare natin, mas malaki yung sa group B kaysa sa group A, tama? Alam niyo ganun din tayo spiritually. That's why the verse says, the Bible says that we should walk in the Spirit so that we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh because we are going through a spiritual war. We are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, ito yung soul natin, ito yung body natin, and ito yung ating spirit. Kung sino ang mas malakas dyan, yun ang mananalo. Kaya kadalasan, kahit nasabihin nila sila ay mananampalataya, bakit sila naglalaseng? Kahit sila ay mananampalataya, bakit sila nagmumura? Kahit sila ay mananampalataya, bakit sila naninigarilyo? Why? Because the spirit is weak, the body is stronger. Kaya mas nahihila yung, yung spirit, I, I mean the soul, para gawin yung lust of the flesh. Which, tayo bilang mga nang mana ng palataya, that should not be the case. Dahil tayo mga anak na tayo ng Diyos eh. Dahil tayo ligtas na tayo eh. We are not saved by our works. We are saved by the Lord Jesus Christ. At ang Panginoong Heso Kristo ang nangikita sa atin. Do you think people would believe that we are sons and children of God if we do the same works that they do there in the world? Of course not. Kaya sabi ni Apostle Paul, itong katawan niyang ito, he puts it under subjection. Lest that by any means he should be a castaway. Ganon din ho sa atin bilang mga mananampalataya. 
Now, how could we do that, Brother George? Going back to the verses that, or to our text verse in Hebrews chapter 10, it says here in verse number 22, Let us draw near with a pure heart, or with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. Kailangan ho natin, itong katawan ho natin ito, ay continuously nauhugasan ng salita ng Panginoon. I'll be celebrating my first year anniversary tomorrow. Alam ba yun? Most of you know, the first time that I attended this church was November 1, and that was a Sunday. That's why tomorrow, I'll be spending or I'll be celebrating my first year anniversary. And I'll be spending it alone with God. Butin lang na tiyempo din, nanay. Midnight cry natin ngayong gabi. Amen? Amen? There are a lot of things I'd like to thank God for throughout the years. And if I was to compare my life back then, almost a year ago, at ngayon, I am thankful that because of this word, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I don't do mistakes. I'm not saying na hindi ako nakakagawa ng mga bagay na nakapalpakan sa harapan ng Diyos. But I am thankful today that because of this word, because of the Bible, because of Him giving it to me, and because of the constant preaching from the word of God, I am thankful kahit pa paano nakokontrol itong body na ito. Why? Because we need to have our bodies sprinkled and washed with pure water. Hindi lang tubig, not only water, but rather being washed with pure water. It says in verse number, t number 23, let us, <clears throat> let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Hindi... Uh, anong tawag nito? Uh, nakakita na kayo ng alon, kapunta na kayo sa mga beaches, di ba? Ang nakikita mo yung alon, hindi naman uh, steady lang, di ba? Uh, Paiba-iba yung, yung agos niyan, di ba? Hindi, hindi isa lang ang agos niyan, paiba-iba. It goes to the left, goes to the right, goes forward, goes backward, goes there, over lahat ng pwedeng puntahan niyan. Ganun ang agos ng, ng alon. Pero ang sabi ng salita ng Panginoon, dapat hindi sa ating pananampalataya, in order for us believers na yung ating pananampalataya ay hindi nagdidwindle, hindi pa alon-alon, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Bakit? For He is faithful that promise. Ang pangako ng Diyos, kahit na anong sabihin ng tao, will still be fulfilled. Amen? Amen? Maraming tao sa panahon natin ngayon, na dahil sa mga pangyayari na, na, na nangyayari sa buong mundo, iniisip na nila hindi yata totoo ang Diyos. Dahil kung totoo ang Diyos, bakit maraming taong namamatay? My let me stop and tell you, magpasalamat tayo, hindi pa tayo kinukuha ng Diyos. God has a purpose for us. God has a purpose why we are still here. And if I was to think, dapat wala na ako dito ngayon sa lahat ng mga kalokohan na aking ginawa, sa lahat ng mga kapalpakan na nagawa ko sa harapan ng Diyos, I should be one of the people who are dead. But God kept me alive because God has a purpose. Ganon din ang Diyos sa ating buhay, sa bawat isa sa atin na nandito ngayong umaga. Now it says here in verse number 24, Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and unto good works. Going to our text verse now, I'd like to entitle the message this morning. Title pa lang, Brother George. Don't worry, maaga tayo matatapos. This will just take me five minutes and one hour. Okay? So, the title of the message this morning is The Importance of Nalagay ko dito is the importance of church attendance, but I'd like to change it. 
Ang gusto kong ilagay na title dito, what God is placing in my mind right now is the importance of every, not that, every church gathering. Okay? As I said kanina, while uh, I just went ahead of myself kanina when I was announcing I was supposed to say this today or ngayon, but uh, I'll just go ahead and repeat it. The same, how, kung gaano ka-importante ang Sunday morning service, ganun din ka-importante sa harapan ng Diyos ang Sunday afternoon church service or church gathering. Tama ba? Amen. Ganun din ka-importante sa harapan ng Diyos ang Wednesday morning church gathering. Tama? Ganon din ka-importante sa harapan ng Diyos ang Wednesday evening church gathering. Tama? Ganon din ka-importante sa harapan ng Diyos ang Friday evening church gathering. The same pagdating ng Saturday soul winning church gathering. Every church gathering is important sa harapan ng Diyos. The question is, do we give importance Sa lahat ng church gatherings natin? I hope so. Amen? Mga anak tayo ng Diyos eh. Tama? And if not for the word of God, which I am thankful for, I do not know where I would be. I do not even know how my life would turn out without the word of God. Paano kaya kung hindi ako nag ng church? Hmm? Most of you have seen me nung una kong pumunta dito, di ba, Brother Rick? Kala nila, asawa ko daw yung nanay ko. Ganon katanda yung itsura ko nung when I first came here. Ngayon, ano sa palagay nyo? Bunso? <laughs> no? <laughs> but nonetheless, that's why I'm preaching this hard to you this uh, very morning or every time I get the privilege to preach. I do not take it as an opportunity to, 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 to attack you. I do not take it as an opportunity na natirahin kayo. No! I take it as an opportunity to be of help sa inyo because I know the product that sin, bring, that sin brings to each and every life ng mga anak ng Diyos. Now paying the price for it. Totoo yung sinabi ni, ni Pastor nung, nung, uh, when, when he preached about sowing and reaping, the principle of that. That was a Friday evening, right? Yeah. I'm paying the price for it. Yeah. Amen daw. <laughs> go, sabi niya, go ahead, preach on. <laughs> Amen, Titus. Now I'm paying the price for it. Now the reason why I'm preaching this hard, dahil ayaw ko balang araw, you'd be paying the price of sin too. I would not like any of you to pass through the road that I have gone through. Because that's the road na sa palagay ng karamihan, yun yung road na cool, that would make you cool. Yes, you would look cool in front of people, your friends, or even yung mga kapitbahay mo, but not in front of God. It may be cool na meron kang daladalang beer sa iyong kamay, Brother Cedric, pero hindi siya nagdadala ng beer. Ha? Coke yung daladala niya palagi. But nonetheless, it would look cool. Sa harapan ng mga tao, meron kang daladalang red horse, pa, naglalakad ka sa daan, pasuray-suray ka, akala mo, akala mo matapang ka, nakalis pa yung damit mo, nakasampay sa iyong, sa iyong balikat, siga-siga ka naglalakad sa daan. You think it's cool? Sa harapan ng mundo, yes, that would be cool. Meron ka pa sigarilyo sa iyong kamay. Lahat ng dinadaanan mo, pinagmumura mo. Yes, that would be cool in front of the world. But as a child of God, do you think that's cool? What's cool, I think, huh? what I think that's cool in front of God is His child doing His will. That's why there are a lot of so-called Christians nowadays. I hope it's not in this church. Wala naman siguro, tama? Laman. Amen? But if you're trying to walk down that path, let me stop and tell you, it's time to stop and get right with God. That's not a good road to pass through. Yan ang buhay na magdadala sa atin ng destruction. And the Bible is always true. 
Akala natin mas magaling tayo sa Diyos, pero ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, pride goeth before destruction. It's gonna destroy your life. Now I hope that none of us ay tahakin yung daanan na yun. Amen? So ano natin, anong kailangan natin gawin? Let's give importance to every church gathering. Dahil sa tuwing tayo ay dumadalo sa tahanan ng Panginoon, my! Nakakapakinig tayo ng salita ng Panginoon? I remember the first time that I attended church, I felt like I was being kicked away. Hindi ka bagay dito. Alam niyo naman si pastor kung paano mag-preach. Pero alam niyo, he is not trying to kick us out. Alam ba din kung uh, what our pastor is trying to kick out is the devil in our life. Time for us to get right with God. If uh, we have our feelings na nasasaktan, pambira, pinepersonal, yata, yata ako eh. No, hindi ikaw ang pinepersonal. Ang jablo sa ating buhay, ang pinepersonal ng ating pastor and through the preaching of the word para mali sa ating buhay yung kasamaan na yan. If not for the preaching of the word of God, where would we be? Saan tayo nakakapakinig ng salita ng Panginoon? Sa church, tama? Kaya nga pag tayo dumadating sa church, hindi tayo natutulog parang sa mga classrooms natin, di ba? Naalala ko, tinutulugan ko yung, yung nung nasa kam- Lalong-lalo na pag math. Kaya hanggang ngayon, ang pinakaalam ko ay addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, wala na. Hanggang dun lang. Di ko nga alam yung fraction eh. Bakit? Di ako nakikinig sa mat eh. Tinutulungan ko yung mat. Ay hirap, ang hirap pag-aralan. Nagtuturo pa naman yung teacher. Puro numbers, pambira numbers na naman. Puro numbers yung nakikita ko. Kaya tinutulungan ko. Kaya ano nangyari sa akin? Buong, naalala ko, isang, isang buong uh, school year. First grading, second grading, third grading, fourth grading. Ang sabi ng teacher ko, George, be consistent. Naging consistent ako. 75 hanggang fourth grading. That's not a good example. Really, it's not a good example. You may be laughing at it, pero nakakahiya. It's a shame. Kaya kadalasan pagdating din natin sa church, let's try our best to wake ourselves up. Amen? Naalala ko nung, 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 nung uh, yung pumunta po lahat ng preachers dun sa Manila, tapos, uh, ano po kasi yon Bible mode. Bible mode. Aga namin umalis dito. Yeah. And I was still, uh, at, that, uh, at that point, uh, I was still trying to get back on my feet. Okay? Hindi pa ako, like, uh, uh, hindi ko pa nakukuha yung Yung, yung, yung strength, I was still getting back on my feet sa aking paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Now to me, every service is important. Even until now, every church gathering is important. Napunta kami sa MBB, M- MBBE uh, for Bible mode. Antok na antok ako. Ang sarap nung umupo dun sa upuan eh. Para ka na bang nasa sinihan? Nakapunta na ba kayo sa MBBE? Kung kayo makapunta doon, baka marawantukin din kayo. Ang sarap doon sa upuan, aircon pa. E nandun kami sa Maynila yun, di ba? Mainit. Pagpasok mo, malamig. E di natuyo yung pawis mo. Habang natutuyo yung pawis mo, inaantok ka na. Nandun ka nakaupo. But I was trying my best to be awake. Why? Because I need a preaching from the Word of God. Anong ginagawa namin? Naalala ko kami, magkalikod kami ni Brother Rick, nandun siya sa likod ko eh. Brother George, may candy ka pa? Sabi niya, naghanap ng candy. Bakit pampagising? Naubusan kami ng candy. E di mag-amen na lang. Amen! Para magising lang. Kasi pag nag-amen ka, yung adrenaline mo, biglang mabubust up. Nawala yung antok mo. Amen? Kaya pag tayo, hoy, yung, yung mata natin pumipikit-pikit ng ganyan. Oh. 
Amen, man. Sigaw ka lang ng amen. Pero timingan mo. Baka sa, ang, ang tanong sa atin, ang lahat ng gustong pumunta ng impyerno, sumabi ng amen. Sakto, inaantok ka. Amen! Timingan din, timingan. Para mawala yung antok natin. Amen? Okay. Now, back to what we're talking about. The importance of every church gathering. Why is every church gathering important? Verse number 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the days approaching. First and foremost, that I would like us to see is this. The priorities that are involved. It says here, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. There's a priority here. Meron ho tayong dapat i-prioritize. Ano yun? Yung pagtitipon-tipon ho natin. Because every pagtitipon, every gathering ho natin that we are doing, alam niyo ho ba na please ang Panginoon? The Bible says, the principle of this verse is says, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. Alam niyo ba, sa pagtitipon-tipon natin, ang Diyos nandito sa ating kalagitnaan, and He sees each and every one of us na nagbibigay ng kaluwalhatian sa kanyang dakilang pangalan. Pero pag mayroong gathering na ganito, and you, we, 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 we just seek an opportunity na, wag na biglang tinamad. Wala akong pamasahe eh. Di na pupunta ng church. Dito na lang ako online. That's not a valid excuse. Bakit Brother George, alay ng bahay namin. Walking from our house until here takes me pag, pa, 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 papunta dito dahil pababae. It only takes me 45 minutes. Pero p- from here going there, it takes me 55 minutes. And by that time, I get to pray. Kaya pag ako nag, simulang naglakad pa uwi, huwag kayong mag-alala. Hindi nyo kailangan alalahanin because I am walking with God. I get that time, that opportunity to be alone with God. Kahit na minsan, nasa, minsan tayo naglalakad ako sa gilid. May sidewalk. Pero dahil nagsa, yung parang yung, habang naglalakad ako, I was, I was doing that to my hand. Beep! <laughs> Napansin ko, wala na pala ako sa heights, wala na pala ako sa sidewalk. And, napupunta ako dun sa kalsada. Eh, hindi ko alam kung paano ako napunta dun. But, but my, let me stop and tell you. Having no pamasahe is not an excuse for us to be in the gathering. Ang kailangan lang natin is the proper mindset. Kung nais talaga natin i-prioritize kung ano yung sinabi ng salita ng Panginoon, it says here, there is a priority involved and that priority is to not forsake the assembling of ourselves. The Bible says, we know that verse, Matthew chapter 6, but seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God. Sometimes we ask for blessings from God. Sometimes we'd, we'd ask for God to bless us mightily. Pero hindi natin nakukuha yung kasagutan. Why? We are lacking something. We have to set our priorities right. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you. But before all of those things shall be added unto us, we need to put God first. There is a priority involved. Mahal pa talaga natin ang Diyos. There was a time nung last week, tumawag si Ate Cha sa akin. <clears throat> Tawag si Ate Cha. Brother George, ikaw daw, dapat nung Wednesday, Preacher Aga, I was the one supposed to, ano, nung morning na yon. Tumawag si Ate Cha sa akin, Brother George, sabi ni Pastor, ikaw daw mag-preach ng, ng, ng Wednesday, Wednesday morning. And I said, okay, okay lang. Pero sasabi ko kay Ate Cha, but I'm coughing. Umuubo ako. Naalala ko yung sinabi ng pastor, pag meron kang ubo, huwag ka na magpakamartir. 
na pumunta sa church. Baka makahawa ka pa. Pero sabi ko kay Ate Jack, I'm willing to preach. Pero tanungin mo nga kay Pastor kung pwede ako mag-preach kahit umuubo ako. I want to be here in church. Pero ayoko kayong hawaan. I was sick last week. Ayoko naman pumunta dito tapos makahawa ako sa inyo. That, that would not be nice. Ayun, si Ate Cha nakikinig. Ano sabi mo, Brother George? Wala ako sinabig ganun. Ayun, si Ate Cha. Happy birthday, Ate Cha! But that's what I told her. Pero kung yung ating rason, mag-online, mag-online, ano na lang ako, dahil tinamad, that just means that we do not put our priorities first at ayaw natin i-prioritize ang Panginoon. Secondly, not only should we prioritize, not only is there, uh, there are, not only do we have the priorities involved, secondly, it says here in this verse, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, so there's a priority involved, it says here, there's that word together. Tama? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Not only is, are, is there priorities involved, there is also what we call partnership involved. Dahil pag tayo ay nagtitipon-tipon, we gather as a church, not as a people. Tama? We gather here, dito sa loob ng bahay, sambahan, as a church. And my, let me stop and tell you, the church is not this building. Dahil meron dalawang translation niya na natutunan ko to nung ano eh nung nasa Bible college ako. Uh, may dalawang may dalawang translation ng church. Yung una is the ecclesia which came from the word ek and kaleo which means to say a called out assembly. At yung isang isang translation naman that came from the Greek word yun yung uh, uh, kairakun. Yun yung building. Pero yung church, it is not the building, tama? The church is the chosen people of God whom He saved out of the world, separated them to give glory to Him. Yun ho yung church. Di ba uh, tinu- tinuro din yun ni Pastor sa ating, pag, pag tayo pinag-aaralan natin yung, yung ating, yung, yung Baptist history, yung kung bakit tayo Baptist. I have that written down here in my in the back of my Bible. These are things that I've, I've learned when I was still in Bible college. Uh, I'm also taking up Bible college again. Kaya sa mga nais na mag, mag-aral ng, ng salita ng Diyos and uh, to have deeper knowledge, ma, I encourage each and everyone na sabay-sabay tayo mag-aral ng salita ng Diyos. But it says here, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together because there is a partnership involved. Sa ting tayo ay nagtitipon-tipon, we only show one thing sa Panginoon that tayo ay nag-unite para sa Kanyang glory. Pag tayo hindi tayo nakikisama sa pagtitipon, we are not united. Tama? Hindi natin binibigyan ng importansya. Pag hindi natin binibigyan ng importansya, ang nangyayari, walang partnership dyan. At naalala ko uh, that verse in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Para ang Panginoon ay magbigay ng increase, ang kailangan ng Diyos ay tayo ay may partnership. Tama? I remember that time when I was given the privilege to preach that message. Uh, that was a, nung, nung kayo ay pumunta dun sa Tarlac for their anniversary. I preach that message in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And one of my points there is we need to work as a team. Habang tayo ay naglilingkod sa Panginoon, dapat maglingkod tayo sa Panginoon as a team, not divided. Let me stop and tell you that the word team, there is no I in it. Walang I sa team. Sa word na team, walang I. Dahil sa word na team, in order for us to be a team, in order for us as a church to be in partner with God, we need to work as one. 
Pag sinabi ng ating mahal na pastor that we are supposed to uh, 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 what do you call this? We are supposed to gather dito sa loob ng kanyang tahanan because this is what the Bible says we should obey. Bakit brother George? Because we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. As I said, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, Friday evening, Saturday morning, lahat ng services natin throughout the week are all important. Lalong-lalo na ho sa darating ho natin na missions conference, that's also an important event sa ating church. Na kung saan sa darating na missions conference, I do hope and pray na tayo in order to show our partnership we need to get involved. There's a partnership involved. Yes, amen. Not only, not only why, not only is it important why in every church gathering tayo ay nagtitipon-tipon because there's there is a priority involved. There is this partnership involved too. Bakit, brother George? Let's go to that verse, First Corinthians. I'd like you to see this, First Corinthians chapter three. It says here in verse number, it says here in verse number six and verse number seven. It says here, I have planted. Paul said, "Shai nagtanim." Anong sabi ni Apollos? Anong sabi niya na ginagawa ni Apollos? He has watered. Pero sino ang nagbigay ng increase? God gave the increase. Why did God give the increase? Dahil merong nagtanim. At yung nagdilig tinulungan niya yung nagtanim. Hindi niya hinayaan yung tinanim lang. Tama? Now God saw a teamwork here. Nagtulungan. Ano ang ginawa ng Diyos? Because they were united. Yung isa nagtanim. Yung isa nagdilig. Nakita ng Diyos. Okay, I'll give the increase. Kung nais natin na magkaroon ng increase ho dito sa ating church, the principle here is true. The Word of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3. God giveth the increase. If he sees his people working as one. Kaya suportahan ho natin lahat ng church gatherings ho natin dito. Amen po ba? Amen. That's a good time to say amen. amen. That's a good time to say amen. Let me repeat that again. We need to support every church gatherings ng ating church. Amen. If you do not believe that, let me repeat it again. Ulitin ko pa. Dapat tayo bilang mga mananampalataya, bigyan natin ng importansya yan. Yung ating pagtitipon-tipon. Why? Because there is a partnership involved. Number three. Third point po natin. Because there is a perception involved. Pananaw. There is this perception involved. It says in Hebrews, back to the verse that we are, uh, we are studying. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 it says here, as the manner of some is. Pansin honin yun? Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. There's a priority involved. Together, there is a partnership involved. As the manner of some is. There's a perception involved. Maraming pananaw. Kaya yung, nang yung author ng Hebrews. Uh, this is a controversial... Uh, Book on whom who wrote uh, the book of Hebrews. Hindi controversial yung book ng Hebrews. Ah. Ang controversial is yung kung sino ang nagsulat ng book of Hebrews. Uh, maraming nagsasabi ng mga theologians na ang nagsulat ng, ng aklat ng libro ay si Paul. Because halos lahat ng mga, uh, ng mga epistles na sinulat ni Paul from the book of Corinthians until the book of Philemon. Okay. Ganon kung papaano ine-edify ni Paul yung mga churches. Ganon din pagdating dito sa book of Hebrews. Pero hindi natin, we'll know someday when we get up there in heaven. But regardless kung sino man ang nagsulat ng book of Hebrews, pasalamat pa rin tayo, party pa rin ito ng 66 books tulad ng tinuro ni Brother Sam kanina. The Bible came from the Greek word Biblos which means to say a library. Kaya pag nabasa na ho natin yung Bible, nakabasa na ho tayo ng buong library. Nakapunta na ho ba kayo sa library? 
dami libro doon, di ba? Gusto nyo hong makabasa ng library? Basahin ho natin yung, yung Biblia ho natin, yung salita po ng Diyos. Nabasa na ho natin yung, Biblia, yung library because it is more important itong, itong mga nakasulat dito. Mas importante ito kaysa sa mga libro na nandun sa library na city library. Because the words that are written here are words given to us by God. Na ang sabi sa salita ng Diyos na ating binasa lang kanina, there is a perception involved. Ano yung perception na yon? Maraming mga tao sa mananam, na, na mga, maraming mga tao back then, sinabi nung, nag, nung nagsulat ng Hebrews chapter 10, the author of, Hebrew, of the book of Hebrews, sabi niya dito sa chapter 10, merong mga mananampalataya or may mga tao back at that time that they forsake the assembling of themselves. They have the wrong kind of perception. Hindi na ako pupunta sa church. Pare-pareho lang naman yung mga mukhang makikita ko doon. Makikita ko si Brother Rick. Makikita ko si Brother Kevin. Makikita ko si Brother Sam. Ay, lalo na pag lumingkat, nakita mo si Preacher Aga. <laughs> sa pa nung, nung whoever. I'm not, I'm not saying na ano ha, baka sabihin, Allah! Hindi, I'm just... Uh, uh, yung, merong mga taong ganun ang pananaw. Ayaw kong pumunta sa church because of those things. Or maybe sinasabi nila, late ako nagigising eh. Masyado maaga yung church. They have a wrong perception. As the manner of some is. Pero tayo, bilang mga mana ng palataya, we should be thankful na tayo ay nabubuhay sa age na ito sa time na ito, na kung saan ang kaligtasan hin, uh, uh, by grace, through faith alone. And we, sa tamang oras lang, dito tayo sa age na ito na ipanganak. Paano kaya kung napanganak tayo back in the Old Testament times? Hmm? Na kung saan, in order for our sins to be forgiven, tayo ay dal- lagi nagdadala ng sin offering. Kung mabasa ho ninyo yung, 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 uh, yung Old Testament, ganun yung, yung process para sila ay ma-forgive ng kanilang mga kasalanan. They need to bring a sin offering. Offering tapos isusunog ng, susunogin ng high priest. Tapos meron pang qualification dyan. Kung ano yung kasalanan mo, may, may merong, merong, merong certain na offering na dapat mong dalhin. Pero buti na lang. Tama lang yung timing natin sa panahon natin ngayon. Dito tayo sa age na ito, we are called for such a time as this. Now, let us grab that opportunity. Lalong-lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon, na merong, merong tayong, merong, may, may freedom tayo na mag-gather, na magtipon-tipon. Did you know back in the dark ages, lahat ng mga tao back then, pag sila ay nagtitipon-tipon at nahuli, nahuli sila, pinagpapapatay sila. Kaya dapat tayo bilang mga anak ng Diyos sa panahon natin ngayon, we need to have a nice or a proper perception sa ating, sa ating paglilingkod sa Panginoon that we should not be as those na iniwawalang bahala yung pagtitipon. Because every church gathering, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday morning, Wednesday evening, Friday evening, Saturday morning, Every church gathering is important. Kahit na yung mga special gatherings natin, meron tayong darating na missions conference. That's also a church gathering na kung saan we should set our priorities right because there is a partnership involved and we need to have the right perception because of that. Na hindi tayo maging katulad ng mga mana ng palataya back in that time na hindi binibigyan ng importansya yung pagtitipon-tipon. Why, Brother George? Because lastly, lastly, number four, it says here, but exhorting one, am- one another, and so much the more, as you see the days approaching, there is a progress involved. Alam ninyo, I'd like to give a testimony but uh, baka umiyak na naman ako but so hindi na lang. But let me just tell you 
how I'm thankful I am for the Word of God. Amen. If not for the Word of God, there would, no, there would be no progress in this life. There would still be sin in this life. And I know, tulad ng turuho ng salita ng Diyos, because I have done a lot of mistakes in my life na kung saan, I hope and pray na sa lahat ng young people na nandito, you take it as an opportunity na hindi na ninyo pagdaanan ang pinagdaanan ng ibang mga members o mga kalalakihan o mga kababaihan o people from this church that have gone through and have experienced kung ano yung produkto na, 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 na natatamasa nila because of sin. I hope you would take it as an opportunity and as a lesson at wag na ninyong pagdaanan. You may think it's cool na ikaw ay naninigarilyo. Yes, you may think it's cool. But it's not before God. Pero napansin ba ninyo, yung time na tayo ay we stop learning from the Word of God dahil binigyan, hindi natin binigyan ng importansya. There was a time na yung salita ng Panginoon parang isang ordinary na lang na uh, parang naging parang ano na lang sa atin eh, by word. And what happened since then nung hindi natin binigyan ng importansya ang pangangaral ng salita ng Panginoon? Instead of having progress, anong nangyari? Ang turo ng salita ng Diyos, there is curse. If we do not do what God says, there is curse in our lives. Not only in our lives, it also affects the people around us. You may think it's cool. na ikaw ay merong kang hawak na red horse sa iyong kamay at pinapasikat mo sa iyong mga kaibigan na pasuray-suray ka sa daan, it may be cool sa tingin mo. But that's a life that is full of curse. You may think it's cool now. But you're going down the highway of sin. And that would lead you to a cursed life. But if we want progress, because there's a progress involved here. It says here in the Word of God, but exhorting one another. Pag tayo ay nandito sa loob ng tahanan ng Diyos, lalong-lalo na pag nakikita natin yung mga kapatid natin sa pananampalataya, lalo tayong nai-encourage na maglingkod sa kanila, ay maglingkod sa Panginoon, nang dahil sa nakikita natin yung mga kapwa natin mananampalataya. And even though you feel weak in the faith, God is giving us strength because of that. My encourage, my, my, nakaka-encourage whenever I go out with Brother Kevin and share the word of God. Na-encourage ako sa batang ito. You may not know it now. But every time I see him, napakunti-kunti, natututo na siya papaano mag-share ng salita ng Panginoon. That's an encouragement for me. Makita ko yung ibang mga uh, kapatiran sa pananampalataya. They are growing in the faith. That's an encouragement for me. Kita mo, dati hindi kumakanta ng choir. Ngayon kumakanta na sa choir. That's encouragement for me. Because there's a progress involved. That gets to exhort us. It says here, but exhorting one another. Dahil ang buhay nating ito, Ang sabi ng salita ng Diyos, we need to be living epistles. At since yung buhay nating ito ay living epistles, hindi lang yung mga unsaved ang nakakakita niyan. Nakikita rin niyan na mga kapwa natin mananampalataya. Yung dating lasinggero, hindi na lasinggero. Yung dating walang pakialam sa pagpunta ng church, lagi nang, na, lagi nang nakikita sa church. Why? Because there's a progress involved. And the progress that's involved there, sabi dito, and so much the more, as you see the days approaching, lalong-lalo na sa panahon natin ngayon, na alam na natin, <clears throat> malapit na malapit nang dumating ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. We need to give importance to every church attending, to every church gathering, I mean to say. Because we have a priority involved here, 
we have a partnership involved here. We have a perception involved here. And because if God sees it, He will also bring progress because there is progress involved in it. Nawa sa lahat ng mga mana ng palataya na nandito ngayong umaga. You may be at the point na nasa isip mo kung importante ba ang pagpunta sa church, lahat ng church gathering. Maybe the devil is wanting to destroy your life. Maybe the devil is trying to get you because alam ng Jablo that God will be using you for a mighty purpose for His glory. Pero nakikita ng Jablo yun, kaya He's trying to tempt you the best way He can. But I hope and pray that through the message that we have heard, we would set our priorities right. And pag tayo ay nakikipag-partner, magkaroon ng partner, magandang partner, ay yung hindi lang, hindi lang yung kapwa mana ng palataya, but rather we would be partner with the Lord Jesus Christ. Siya ang pinakamagandang partner sa buhay nating ito. Because there's partnership involved. At hindi rin dapat tayo magkaroon ng mal- maling pananaw. As the manner of some is, but rather... We should not forsake every assembling of ourselves together. Because when God sees that, there is a progress involved. God giveth the increase. I hope and pray na meron kayong natutunan ngayong umagang ito.